Okiti Kukpa Oil Palm PLC OPC PLC, one of the oldest and largest palm oil plantation farm in Nigeria, breathed life into the industry and the Nigeria economy as the company records growth contributing to the positive narrative of the Undo State Government. We have a report. This is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Hello, a very good day to you and thanks for joining us. My name is Kenneth Odushola Stevenson and this is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. On today's edition of the program, we are going to be talking about a very important organization that is listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Okitipopa Oil Palm PLC, one of the oldest and the largest oil palm plantation farm in Africa. Over the years, this company has seen the ups and downs of business. But in the last three and a half years, and since the emergence of the current executive governor of Undo State, Oluwaro Timi Akiridulu SEN, the company has now come alive again. He has given the company the necessary support, the necessary conducive environment for the company to thrive, and constituted a very important board headed by a very important industrialist and the former minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Chief Mrs. Mobola G. Oshomon. To look at how the company can thrive and the company has recovered and is now thriving and in the process they are also as you will find out in this particular special report they have also given life to some smallholder farmers that are actually doing well as palm oil business people take a listen Okitipupa Oil Palm PLC, popularly known as OOPC, one of the largest oil palm plantation farms in Africa, is an oil palm processing firm that manages oil palm farm in the southern part of Ondo State, Nigeria, with sites located in Okitipupa, Ilututu, Ikoya, Ibotako, Iyonso in Ireli local government, Ipoke in a poor local government area of the state. Established in 1961 on the 12,474 hectares of land with the objective of carrying out business of palm tree plantation and development, cultivate and grow other related crops and trees, process, prepare, render marketable, buy, sell and dispose of such products either in raw or manufactured state. OOPC strength is in the quality of the farm produce. Okidipupa Oil Palm PLC was started off by the Yawolowo government in 1968 when they acquired acres of land in that area of Ondo State because that's a zone which was good enough for oil palm and cocoa products. And Oil palm and its products was one of those things which the British came to look for in West Africa. And so an expanse of land was acquired by the WNDC in 1968 at various times, some in 72, some in 74. And so there was almost 13,000 acres of land which was acquired and the planting of oil palm started. When Ondo State was separated from the other states, it was one of those things that was granted to the Lex Citos, that is wherever something, any industry is seated, that particular state take seat. So Ondo State Government became the owner. The Nigerian Joint Agency company that was running it was running it for and on behalf of Ondo State Government. But later, the Ondo State Government took complete control of the thing and started running it as one of its parastatals. In 1990, the company went public, okay? And you now had the private sector who came in, took so many percentage of the shares, and um, Ondo State now held 29%, private sector held 
um, the remainder. Now, what then happened over that period, strictly put, government influence and government against the private sector. And the government wasn't going to let go just like that. And it really hampered growth in the company. Um, things were being done in a roughshod manner. And this lasted for so long. And the company literally went down. And it wasn't until um, when uh, the present governor came in that he now decided that, look, let's have a rapid move away from government involvement in this business. And we, as Estherport Farms, we're actually the single largest shareholder because we bought out um, a, a, a multinational that wasn't happy with what was going on in Okizukwa way back in 2004. That is Unilever. We bought them out and we thought we could actually do a lot because we were also sons of the soil. Um, the Chief Mrs. Oshomo and the Oshomo family are from that neck of the woods. And we just thought, this is a heritage for us. If nobody's going to do it, you know, at least we could stick our necks out and come and invest in that place and, you know, do a lot in that place. So we're happy that um, two years, three years after the, the, the new Olusik government came in, we've been able to literally take that place back. We have the biggest uh, plantations in the whole of the Southwest. Um, we still have about 6,000 hectares that we're about to start developing. Um, which will take us about 14,000. I don't think there's any company in Nigeria today that has 14,000 oil farm. So, we know um, there are about 17 products that can actually come from um, the oil farm itself. And we believe that uh, additionally, we're going to install some refining capacity within our facilities that will help us broaden our product base and ensure that um, our local, local content uh, can go as far as 50%. You know, and it will also activate other cottage industries around us. There are a number of big companies that have indicated interest in some of our waste products like our shells, and I believe those can fetch us some significant revenue. We are putting together a template that we drive the products that we push into the market, and which we believe the company will generate significant revenue from. We believe that at the turn of 2024, this company will be a major force in the industry. It can happen overnight. We, have to, we need to make some very huge investments, but it offers the greatest hope of economic development for the state and Nigerian General. After several years of disruption occasioned by the interference and misgovernance, including lack of corporate governance structure, Okitepupa Oil Palm PLC, since the emergence of the new board about two years ago, led by an industrialist and former two time Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Chief Mrs. Alice Mobola Oshomo, supported by a strong assemblage of technocrats, including Boyo Yewumi. Chief Executive Officer Undipa as Vice Chairman, Senator Undom Egba, Barrister Wale Oshomo, amongst others, backed by a resourceful and experienced management team led by Mr. Taiwo Adewale and with the support from the Undo State Government, His Excellency Arakurin Oluwat Rochimi Akiridulu SAN. OOPC has finally backed back into active operation and effective production, providing return on investment to shareholders, providing jobs for smallholder farmers and the community people. From my own particular area, people believe that, you know, we don't climb, we, we cannot climb palm tree because of who we are. And 
we now said, come. The Calabas come. The Rubos come. They make all their money in this place. There are so many judges who were brought up. Supreme Court who were brought up in Okitipupa and their parents were working on this oil palm. But our people have not yet known that this oil palm is money. So we are trying to bring them in with this licensee now. Trying to say that come, come and take so many hectares. So the people are getting benefit now, the landowners are getting benefit. Not only are we paying them for whatever compensation that we believe we should give them every year. We are employing their own people. They are the licensees. Majority of the people, these 110 people, are people from the area. So they are now seeing that, ah, life can become comfortable. We are taking care of the planet, which is the land and, this, and the environment. We are taking care of the people. Then the profit, the profit now, you only declare profit when you have cleared all your debt. It looks as if the growth is coming. And once the growth is coming, this PPP seems it will work. The group of people I believe I should link with now will be the women. Because I know the women are suffering. And the women are working. I believe that I want to appeal to the women that come. Once you hear about this oil park, come, come and buy and resell. So that will make life better for everybody. Even students who cannot pay school fees during time of holidays, they can easily come and work. Holiday jobs. Holiday jobs and pay their school fees. So I think this OOPC can make the difference in Ondo State for the people. Honestly, this is, I, I just believe that I must find the solution to our problems. I was very curious. I did not go to government in 1980 because I was looking for money. No. Where you are now, this Estaport Estate has been in existence before I went into government in 1979-80. I went there because I felt that I want to go and render help to my people. And I am still on that. And I still believe that whatever it takes, I can now tell my children that, you know, either we can help ourselves. But nobody is going to help you if you don't help yourself. If Ondo state government cannot alleviate our poverty, don't look to the federal government that they are coming to alleviate your pro uh, poverty. Because the total earning of federal government doesn't even cope with the population of Nigeria. Are you getting my per capital of every what is it in Nigeria? The federal government doesn't earn it. It doesn't have the surplus to be able to cope with what would remove the poverty level of every Nigerian. So if you are in Ondo State, you have to look at Ondo State. How do we remove our po poverty here? Why should we be in poverty in down south here? When we have OOPC, we have the rivers, we have the gas that is being flared, and we have no light, then you are looking at the management. It's the management now that we should look into. And I believe our present government is doing very well. well in a little way, considering the setbacks we've had and where we are, where we have a good deal of corporate social responsibility. We, that, that actually is something that we consider in all our decisions because um, corporate responsibility is not just giving out things to people. It's being corporately socially responsible even when you are recruiting, even when you want to lay off, even when you want to re reject some things. You look at the impact. 
So corporate identity is a thought process. People always think that it's just what do you have for the society, for the, for, for, for the community. Instead of giving them handout, give them opportunities within the investment called with our PAN PLC, so that they are, our dependency is onto each other. That's also my own idea of corporate social responsibility. It's not a case of the hand that gives is on top and the hand that gives is at the bottom. It's a case you turn it away that becomes a partnership. So, and we're going to further deepen, deepen that um, initiative. But so far, we've been doing well in that area. The youth communities have a lot to benefit. They are, and, I, and that is reflected in our ability to resolve most of the disputes that have gone to court outside of court and we began to develop very solid working relationship with them the company definitely we embark on a number of uh, csr projects in those communities in schools uh, we can only make those investments when the environment is conducive for us to progress and of course it trickles down to them. Palm oil is using about 50% of all the products sold in a typical Lord supermarket and with good reason. It is extremely versatile, has lifted millions of people out of poverty, and if properly managed can be beneficial for the environment. No wonder the current board, with the support of the Undo State Government, has put in place strong and effective corporate governance structure that will take the firm to the next level. We want to bring in experts who have something to deliver. The commitment must be total to all. Any core investor who is coming, be it Nigerian, be it foreign, they are coming purposefully because of profit. And so everybody will have to make sure that this company is not being run at a loss. The landowners who are members of this board are there to protect the interests of the landowning group, to see that whatever is due to these landowners are given. The employees, now we have the corporate governance, which give right to the employees as well. Their own interests too will be protected. But then it means everybody must see that there is growth in OOPC. It still has the number of years in almost all the estates. Some of the estates have well over 40 years before it expires. We can still go another round of growth. And it will be to the best interest, it will be the best thing that can happen to Ondo State in that it has multiple effects for Ondo State. More people are being put into employment. School children um, will be more comfortable in that their parents can now afford to pay their school fees. They can pay for the WIAC exam fees. They can pay for textbooks. And there will be peace within the home. And our own people too, who are not used to the culture of work. Many of the cutters and carriers, we have noticed, will take their money. At the end of the day, they will spend the money on buying all sorts of drugs. Um, we need people who are not drug infested so the company is interested in their welfare so at the end of the day if we can have about three or four of Okitipupa type in Ondo state I think the poverty level will be greatly reduced and I wish it well Power Palm at its prime was one of the biggest in the country and is getting close to taking its rightful position. 
So you cannot abort a child that has been born. The new management has been born. We're beginning to see green shoots come off the ground. We're beginning to see solid signs of profitability, sustainability, innovation, like the idea you talked about, listen, creativity in thought process, good management, um, world-class corporate governance. What else are you looking for? Okupa has not made as much money as it is making now. Not the best of times. The good times are here is to make it sustainable because you need to repeat it over and over so there becomes a culture that this place is back. It's not, it's not a fluke. And that is why we're looking for core investors to further deepen the investments and take it to a level where never again will there be overbearing influence from one investor or from government or from any stakeholder. So you, you have to pour clear blue water so that politics and business don't mix. When they mix, it doesn't come up with anything good. Well, well the company has not paid any dividend in the last 27 years. But the assurance that Claire are there today that I'm sure the company will start paying dividends at the end of 2020. And therefore, the state will definitely get what is due to it, like every other shareholder. Besides that, the, com the government has provided an enabling environment for us to do our business. They have provided security, which is very significant in the environment in which we operate. When we came, there was so much insecurity and resistance to the restructuring that we wanted to carry out. But today, we have overcome that. There's a business plan to that effect, you know, and all these things cost a certain amount. So, um, a proper meal now, a, a, a 40 ton meal is probably about $6 million. Yes. So, let's say we put about two or three in Okitibuk, but that's $18 million. You know, surely that is where you want an, a, a co investor to say, okay, yes, I will bring my money. Funny thing is that even the co investor can actually have all those meals hanging around. So, they bring it, bring it in. This is what they are bringing into Okitibupa. You know, this will form maybe 51% of the company. So, the company expands. You know, the company is much more than it is right now. So far, what Okitibupa has, Okitibupa has the land, Okitibupa has, has the trees. Okitibupa also has, has plans to replant. All these are going to cost money. Okay? So, the co investor comes and says, oh, yes, okay, I like this. Okay, in four or five years, when all these things are ready, here is my meal. Okay? My meal is worth this amount of money. Okay? I will also inject cash of so much. So he brings that thing, puts it together, and the company starts running. It's like injecting new, 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 new life, new, new blood into a company that is, um, is, is, is comatose. In the corporate world, ensuring profitability, demand value addition and support from stakeholders, the current milestones recorded by the board and management also benefited from the support of the host communities and shareholders. Everything to make us succeed, we will do. So, uh, what is our aim? To get our people engaged, employment. These children that are stealing, if they had the chance of being employed and gave paid, instead of stealing, they have asked for you, you pay them. But you, you have, they have asked for you, you don't pay, or you sell it, you don't pay them. They go back uh, in the wee hours and take the free one. So even if it's to slash our women in this area, they work harder than the men. Though. They can work harder in the farm. They work for morning to the evening. They are, they are strongly built. They slash the thing clearer than the men who will be in hurry. They want to go, but the women will do it. Even if it is women to do the slashing, they will do it. So. That is this dream of getting employed. The, 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 the idea of people graduating and no job. There will be jobs. People are here now at the headquarters. The people in the various states, they will be engaged.
of various qualifications. Then you want to buy and sell. You get to buy and sell. It was tough at the beginning, but now I believe we are working together. Um, the host communities have their representative on the board. Uh, we meet with they also. There's also the landowners association recognized by the company, and we meet with them regularly. We also meet with the traditional rulers, and we play our own um, support that we can afford. I think they are relatively peaceful, let's be honest. It's just that they need to continue to have a sense of ownership. They are peaceful. We, we don't really have issues beyond the national average. We're a very peaceful state. We're, we're, we embrace investors. So I, I don't think um, peace is actually something that they lack. It's just that now that they have a lot more stakeholders in terms of the, the portions that have been leased out and all that, uh, everybody is um, eager to make sure that Rukupupa oil palm remains profitable, is viable, and uh, they are repositioning it. So it's not so much a lack of peace, but maybe as they get more involved, the commitment should be deeper. Indeed, it is unfortunate that despite the value and significance, palm oil production does not have significant impact on the economic growth in Nigeria. And this weak result is as a result of the neglect and not enough attention being paid or given to this vital agribusiness sector. With the success recorded within the last two years by the board and management of OOPC, Undo State and Nigeria in general stands to benefit from the massive investment. If the company itself, if its mills are working, if the Okitipupa 40 ton per hour is working, if the Poke, uh, how many tons, four and a half tons per hour, hour is working, we are going to get more money, more revenue, instead of the revenue going to our competitors who are in the forest and who are these illegal millers are still stealing the, the, the palm fruits. And we're going to get more money too from the palm kernel as well. More money will come in. The environment itself will be more congenial for the people. When you went to Ilutitu and Ibotako, you could see that those forests have been cleared now. What um, the amount of fresh air coming in? Can you imagine the reptiles will call, that will come to the town in the night because you are being surrounded by all these forests? So life will be better for all of us. The facilities that we have here can actually give us a lot of resources, a lot of revenue. Of course, we are going to redevelop them and make them uh, we don't have enough um, uh, hotels in here. What we plan is that rather than just keep them idle, most weekends the buildings will be available for people social coming activities. to town yeah, for social activities. We even intend to develop our waterfront uh, where people can sit down and relax. And um, it becomes a an avenue to generate, um, to extend our income generating capacity. Research in 2017 finds that $39 billion of GDP benefits are attributed to palm oil imports, representing 2.9 million jobs around the world. In India alone, the world's biggest importer, over 1 million jobs are sustained. The global production of palm oil in 2019-2020 marketing year stood at 72.27 million metric tons. What then next for OOPC and what should the state, the country, the world and the shareholders be looking forward to going forward? For me, the future is bright. The future is red like the oil palm. <laughs> the future is golden. Oh, honestly, um, Okiruwa oil palm is a success story and is one of my KPIs. I'm very happy to be identified with it. I wish I could transform myself to the investor they are looking for <laughs> because I know 
that um, I don't know any particular industry in Nigeria now that is as profitable. So Gruba is going to come back to what it used to be and probably overtake a few because we're, we're dead serious about it. We're, we're not, um, you know, we're committed. And any investor coming in would know on when they do their due diligence that they might probably wonder why is this going for sale. But the government is not interested in running businesses and governors should not. You, may, you know, have a few percentage to grow your IGR, but um, let those, yes, the environment, let those who are better suited. Yes, the technical competences, the financial know-how, who have industrial knowledge, um, who can add value, let them do the, the, let them run the business. So that's the model we have approached all our businesses, all the investments that the state has gone into. Okupa is the first one that has come fully alive. Others will follow shortly and um, we're encouraged. We take a lot of courage from it. If we have people who are coming in with money, if we get these core investors with money, we will take them in. We will do double what we can do. But without them coming, I'm sure Kitibupa can really foster itself to take a position in the oil palm industry market. We will want to be able to export our products out of Nigeria because if many people are taking the challenges and we are not wasting what we have, there is no reason why we would not have surplus that we can send abroad. Food and fuel. Fuel and food. The two essentials that humanity has sought to produce and provide for since time immemorial. Palm oil used by the ancient Egyptians, then more recently cultivated in Nigeria, West Africa, and laterly in Malaysia and Indonesia, is a source of both. There you have it. You saw the clips, you saw the documentary, you saw the support as, te as testimony from the board members and the chairman of the board, Chief Mrs. Mubola Oshomo. And in the last three and a half years, Okitipupa Oil Palm PLC, that Hidato had no single account, is now operating as a normal business enterprise. And what a way to go. I would like to say congratulations to uh, the executive governor of Ondo State and the entire board member and the management of OOPC for bringing life into this important enterprise, contributing to the IGR of Ondo State and indeed Nigeria. In the next edition of this particular documentary, we hopefully will be talking with the executive governor of Ondo State himself to talk, and tell, to talk about the story of OOPC and what he had to do to turn it around. It's been Kenneth Odushola Stevenson presenting Inside Business Africa. Thank you again for watching. See you next time.